You guys, I'm back with another collections video and this time I'm gonna show you my complete Laserdisc collection. If you consider yourself a movie collector and you do not have at least some Laserdiscs, I question your authenticity. The artwork on these Laserdiscs alone is amazing. It's the size of a record and has full artwork, sometimes a fold out with more artwork on the inside. Even if you use these just to frame them in your home, it's a great way to collect and I encourage anybody to at least have some laser discs of their favorite movies. I have a very eclectic collection. I've not seen all of these movies, but I've seen a lot of them. I'd like to tell you a little bit about it and show you my collection. Over 250 laser discs. This technology was the best way you could view a film in the 80s and 90s. Until DVD push them off their pedestal. As I go through these laser discs, you'll find that a lot of these are worth $30 to $40 when they were purchased. And in the 80s and 90s, that's equivalent to a lot more money today. That's why laser discs struggle to take off completely and become the industry standard for movie viewing. But now in the 2020s, laser discs have become affordable again. Now's the perfect time for you to start collecting laser discs. Just make sure you have the room and have some very sturdy shelves. These are as heavy as records, and these 250 discs alone are over 100 pounds. This is Disney's Flight of the Navigator. Here we have some themes that we'll see in the 80s a lot. It's very futuristic and sci-fi. There's a little boy and a little cute alien creature. This one took place in San Francisco, also a popular place for movies in the 80s. Next up, we have a classic movie called Ghost. This is Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore and Whoopi Goldberg. This particular laser disc can open up and has even more fantastic artwork on the inside. Here's another classic 80s fantasy film called Tron. This is the laser video disc. We flip it over and we learn even more about Tron. Tron offers sights that no eye, no camera has ever beheld before. This looks like a horror movie called Pulse. It looks terrifying and it has something to do with electricity. It's a Columbia Pictures film, of course. It looks like they were trying to capitalize on the popularity of the movie Firestarter. Here we have a little boy and he's got some magical powers. 1988. Here's an oldie but a goodie called Way Out West. That's right, before Ren and Stimpy, there was Laurel and Hardy, the classic comedic duo. Next up, this is a cult classic comedy film called Spaceballs. Mel Brooks delves into the world of Star Wars and made one of the first parody movies about it. Spaceballs, classic movie, John Candy, Rick Moranis, Mel Brooks. If you love the movie Airplane or Goofy Spoofs, this is a great movie. Next up, we got a remake of the 50s film Invaders from Mars. Look at this fantastic artwork on the back. It almost looks like a comic strip. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go! Go Ninja, go Ninja, go! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie! The first movie! And you can hear it in digital sound, stereo surround sound on this laser discs. This is actually a really crisp copy of this movie. Excellent condition. The most original idea in years, says Joel Siegel. The most original idea in years. That's what Siegel thought, huh? I feel like I could have created this idea if I had a couple edibles. Here we go, we have a movie called Videodrome. First it controls your mind, then it controls your body. That's kind of like these modern cell phones today, huh? If we look closely, we see this movie was $30 when it came out. And this was in, let's see the year. This movie came out in 1983. $30 in 1983 was this much. That's incredible. Imagine paying that much to own a movie nowadays. Did you like Ben-Hur? Well, you'll like this film, Ishtar, with Warren Beatty, Isabel Adjani, and Dustin Hoffman. This looks like a classic film that's set in the desert. Do you like horror movies? Well, then you'll like Fright Night, a Columbia Pictures movie. This looks like this movie has great makeup to turn the people into werewolves or vampires. Here's another one that looks like it might have flopped in theaters. It's called The Last Starfighter. They have a great cover, though. It's very intriguing. The back says he didn't find his dreams. His dreams found him. Whatever that means. Tom Selleck, one of the great action stars of the 70s and 80s, in this futuristic film called Runaway. Looks like it's got a lot of thrills and spills, and it's set in the future. Steven Seagal has not made a lot of great movies over the years, but one of the ones that is considered the greatest is this movie, Under Siege. It's not a job, it's an adventure. Steven Seagal comes aboard and comes on strong, combining humor and heroics in a fireball of a movie. This movie features all the greats, like Tommy Lee Jones, Steven Seagal, and Gary Busey. If you're a fan of the new movie, Dune, you'll love this movie. This is the original movie. Dune, a place beyond your dreams, a movie beyond your imagination. This movie cost $40, which is a lot even nowadays. And this movie came out in 1985. 
gosh, that's a lot of money. Another classic 90s action film, Cliffhanger, by Sylvester Stallone. I didn't think there was anything more deluxe than my channel, but apparently this is the deluxe widescreen version. John Lithgow and Sylvester Stallone wow you in this thriller. I've got quite a few Stephen King movies, and this is one of them, Firestarter. Classic 80s film. This is where Drew Barrymore became a true star. It cost $15 million to produce this movie. And it'll cost you about 30 or 40 to own at home. We have Splash. A comedy film that got Tom Hanks going. Here we go, here's another one called The Witches of Eastwick. With an all-star cast, Jack Nicholson, Cher, Susan Sarandon, Michelle Pfeiffer. Jack Nicholson plays the devil in this flick with a bunch of women. Ooh, look at this movie. Here's a very sensual movie called Sliver. You like to watch, don't you? Why yes, I do like to watch my laser discs. Thank you for asking. Back when William Baldwin was a sex symbol. Star Quest. Beyond the Rising Moon. Starring Tracy Davis, whoever that might be. A lot of these laser discs, you guys, I've collected over the years from garage sales and estate sales, so I don't necessarily know every film. But every film is an excellent piece of history. Next up, that classic redone by Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd, Dragnet, Los Angeles Police. If you guys haven't seen the rap video of Tom Hanks in this movie, it's definitely worth a watch. What a good time this looks like it is. 1988. Next up, another classic old film called It Came Beneath the Sea. This one's in black and white, so it's not taking full advantage of the Laserdisc's abilities. One of my personal favorites from the decade is Twister, a classic movie that I've seen about a million times in school. They used to put it on every time we had a substitute teacher. This is a great action movie. I love the special effects, and I love the chemistry between the two main actors. Next up, we have a film called The Day After, Beyond Imagining, the most controversial film of the decade. Why was it so controversial, you ask? Because it takes place after the catastrophe of a nuclear confrontation and its devastating effects on the people. This was, of course, during the Cold War where a nuclear attack was imminent. Another one of my favorites from the 90s, Apollo 13. This follows the harrowing tale of NASA's almost failed expedition into space. Another excellent film, Brazil, looks at a dystopian future. This was a very unique movie, especially for the time that it came out, and follows some of the themes of the movie 1984. Terry Gilliam, Robert De Niro, Catherine Hellman, Ian Holm, Bob Hoskins, Michael Palin, and Kim Griest. Brazil is a surrealistic nightmare vision of a perfect future where technology reigns supreme. Everyone is monitored by a secret government agency that forbids love to interfere with efficiency. Does that sound familiar, folks? Well, here it is in the movie Brazil. Check it out. Another heavy hitter. This is Pulp Fiction. One of Quentin Tarantino's best films, in my opinion. This one also folds out. If you're a true Quentin Tarantino fan, this is an excellent addition to your collection. It has great artwork and features things you can't get on the DVD copy. The number one movie for this year. Another classic of the 90s, True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is a great action movie with good sense of humor. Here's a movie that's so bad that it's good. It's called Anaconda, and look at this excellent artwork. This features some of the best actors of our generation. J-Lo, Ice Cube, and the rest. They remade this movie in 2022. This is Top Gun, one of the most classic films of the 1980s and one of the most classic American films to date. This film solidified Tom Cruise as a household name. Steven Spielberg, ever heard of him? This is Jurassic Park, the film that revolutionized special effects. This also folds out into two beautiful panels featuring scenes from the movie. In 1995, if you had this, you were a king. Everybody would want to come over and watch this film over and over. I've seen all the Jurassic Park films and I think they're great for the family, as long as the little ones don't mind the dinosaur violence. This is the movie Alien, and this is the third in the series of movies. The final chapter of the most terrifying saga in science fiction history. Here's the movie Abyss that I think I remember, and if I do recall correctly, this is an awesome film. This also folds out into two glorious panels that really give you a feel for what the movie is like. Ed Harris and James Cameron. If you're looking for a little bit of fun in your Laserdisc collection, you'll need Home Alone. Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, and the other guy. A film from John Hughes. America fell in love with Macaulay Culkin. Even Michael Jackson noticed him and had him come over to his home. When Kevin's family left for vacation, they forgot one minor detail. Kevin! And if you get the first one, you gotta get the second one. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. In my opinion, it's almost better than the first one. And if you look closely in Home Alone 2, you'll spot an appearance from Donald Trump, our ex-president. Every child from the 80s and 90s loved this movie, Beetlejuice. 
It's a fun, fantastical adventure that's a little bit dark, but not too dark. It keeps a fun attitude about itself. An amazing Disney masterpiece. This is Fantasia. This movie has a lot of excellent colors and graphics and looks excellent on the Laserdisc. I also have a copy of the first Aliens film. Sigourney Weaver takes on this sci-fi futuristic film. Here we have a movie that features one of the stars from Two and a Half Men, Charlie Sheen. This is before he was drinking tiger blood. He was in this movie called The Arrival. This is the widescreen version and it has a lot of interesting special effects. Siskel and Eber gave it two thumbs up. They'll give any damn thing two thumbs up. Here's another Michael Crichton film called Coma, originally sold for $35. Michael Douglas and Geneve Bouljold will hold. I don't know much about this film. It looks very intriguing. Next up, we got another film called Catch-22. And I think this laser disc would catch your attention if you saw it on the shelves. But we find out by switching it over that, that it's all about World War II and Alan Arkin is the star. Next up, we have another comedy called History of the World Part 1. Mel Brooks pulls no punches in this film. This is before cancel culture and before people were afraid to make racial jokes. And this film is full of them. It may shock you to watch this in the modern era. Next up, the sequel to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. The Secret of the Ooze. Cowabunga, dude. The first movie was such a classic and had so many quotables, they had to come out with a second one. The Washington Post said, this is better than the first. It's a 10. Who knew that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would be so universally loved? A movie that has a special place for millennials' hearts is a movie called The Land Before Time. A classic animated film that captured the hearts of anybody who watched it. Join Littlefoot, Sarah, Spike, and Ducky and Petrie on a magic journey that begins long ago when dinosaurs roamed a land threatened by earthquakes and volcanoes. Before Disney Pixar, there was The Land Before Time. Here's a film by Robin Williams called Toys. This film folds out into two beautiful, colorful panels. VHS would not capture the color quality quite as good as Laserdisc. This film also features Barry Levinson, LL Cool J, and Joan Cusack. Next up, we have a movie from the 90s called Species. This is Ben Kingsley, Michael Madsen, Alfred Molina, and Forrest Whitaker. Men cannot resist her, mankind may not survive her. A beautiful vixen that'll kill you. This movie is sure to thrill. Next up, a Disney movie that did very poorly in theaters and was considered a flop. It's called The Rocketeer. Siskel and Ebert giving this also two thumbs up. But what didn't they give two thumbs up? Let's be honest. Watch The Rocketeer and judge for yourself. It's as bad as people say. Another movie that tried to capture the same audience as Aliens is this movie, Dead Space. Although with a lot smaller budget, this movie did not look quite as good. Fun fact, it features a young Brian Cranston in this movie from 1991. Another fun Steven Spielberg movie from the 80s is called Batteries Not Included. Aliens was such a popular theme for the 80s. This takes a lighthearted approach look at UFOs and aliens. Here's the movie that made Sean Penn a star, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It's a film made in the 80s, but takes place in the 50s. Here's a classic for any sneakerhead. It's called Sneakers. No, I'm just kidding. It's not about sneakers, but it has an all-star cast. Sneakers is an action thriller that is exploding with new technology and fresh surprises. Speed 1 was good, but Speed 2 is not as good. Sandra Bullock and Jason Patrick. Keanu Reeves decided not to be in this film, and I think he made the right decision. We can see that there was even a sale price in the 90s, going from $40 to $30. This film did not do as well. Although, Sis Clint Ebert gave it two thumbs up again, because they'll just give those two thumbs up to anybody. That's what sold films in the 90s, is two thumbs up. Here we have a movie called Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford, an awesome action star of the 80s and 90s. Harrison Ford returns as intrepid CIA agent Jack Ryan. Another fun space alien based movie called Explorers from the 80s. They just pumped these out in the 80s, didn't they? From the same director as Gremlins. This cover is freaking amazing. Look at it. Doesn't it make you want to watch that film? It looks action packed and futuristic. This movie's called The Time Guardian. Pray he's not too late. They compare this movie to Star Wars because, well, it has Carrie Fisher. It's your good old classic friend John Wayne, the cowboy from America. This movie takes place in the oil fields and looks like disaster strikes in this one. Here's a spooky scary movie. It's called Troll. Not Trolls, this is Troll. Trying to cash in on that gremlins phase of the 80s. Here's another Harrison Ford film where he plays the president in Air Force One. One of Harrison Ford's most famous roles was in this movie. Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman in Crimson Tide. Includes bonus feature, The Making of Crimson Tide. You couldn't just go on YouTube and find out the making of this movie. You had to get it on Laserdisc. 
Another dystopian future movie, this one's called Demolition Man, where people get fined for saying bad words. Sergeant John Spartan doesn't fight crime. He rips into it like a junkyard dog. Here's a fun piece of history. It's a space archive. The shuttle downlink, the repair of Solar Max. This depicts real live actions of them repairing the satellite in space. During the peak popularity of Denzel Washington and Julia Roberts' career, they did a movie called The Pelican Brief. While this movie is far from brief, it's 141 minutes. I love Walter Matthau and he did a movie with Barbara Streisand called Hello Dolly, also featuring the music of Louis Armstrong. Here's a little known sci-fi movie called Star Wars. This is about a war within the stars, in the galaxy, featuring robots, with the tagline, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Maybe this movie will have a future. They did make three of them. Just kidding, everybody knows this movie. It's a classic and I got it on Laserdisc. You can see the original special effects on the Laserdisc version. Of course, we do have The Empire Strikes Back as well. And I love the way they depicted this movie on the cover. The battle to save the galaxy from the evil of Darth Vader and the Imperial forces continues in the spellbinding Star Wars sequel. Then you gotta hit him with the finale, Return of the Jedi on Laserdisc. Brought to you by CBS Fox Video. The exciting conclusion to the Star Wars tale, featuring Jabba the Hutt, before his fame from My 600 Pound Life. Here's a truly obscure sci-fi futuristic film called Galaxina. Galaxina? Galaxina. Not much is listed on the back of this disc. It came out in 1980. and features Playboy Playmate of the Year, Dorothy R. Stratton. Stephen King, Stephen King, Stephen King in Maximum Overdrive, featuring Emilio Estevez, and music by ACDC. Laser discs had excellent audio, so if you're gonna listen to music, this is the way to do it. This is a Mad Max type film. Following my series of Stephen King films, we have It, which has been redone in the modern age. But here's the original, It, which features a very scary John Ritter playing the clown. Next up, we got another scary one called Mutant. People in a small town start disappearing, and they have to figure out what's going on. There's a chemical plant dumping illegal deadly wastes onto the soil. Here's a classic fun movie called Short Circuit. In the 80s, I feel like you had to either be a robot, an alien to make a movie. Classic film with Steve Gutenberg. Love it. Here's a spooky, fantastic film called Frankenstein Unbound. Look at this great cover. This features Roger Corman's long-awaited return to directing. This is another disturbing, but in different ways. It's a very grotesque and very strange movie from the strange mind of Dan Aykroyd. He has a lot of gross-out humor in this one. It's a strange ride, and Chevy Chase and Demi Moore are on board this film as well. Here's another doomsday film called The Quiet Earth with another dystopian reality cover. It's a horrifying doomsday scenario that leaves the earth on the brink of total oblivion. Here's a fun goofy romp called Amazon Women of the Moon. It looks like a fun raunchy tale and parodies a lot of space movies. Here's a little known Martin Scorsese film called After Hours with the most 80s looking cover I've ever seen. This is Martin Scorsese's attempt at comedy, a badass action movie called The Delta Force with old-timer Lee Marvin and young up-and-coming star Chuck Norris. They say when Chuck Norris does push-ups, he doesn't push himself up, he pushes the world down. Looks like a classic 80s film to me. Next up, another sci-fi futuristic space film called Silent Running. It takes place in the futuristic year of 2008. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the world does not look as though it does in this film. Here's another great one with Eddie Murphy and Nick Dolte called 48 Hours. They play, an, they play an unlikely duo in this cop film. Here's a movie that got Jeff Goldblum's career started called The Fly. It features a young Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum in the horrific classic where a man is turned into an insect. And you know I had to get Fly too, Like father, like son. The terrifying sequel to the acclaimed 1986 hit The Fly. Here we have a movie called Congo from the best-selling novel by the author of Jurassic Park. It says this film features breathtaking action and amazing special effects. Well, I guess we'll be the judge of that. Here's a movie that everyone's seen, Ocean's Eleven. Oh, but you haven't seen the original. This has all the Rat Packers, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Angie Dickinson. This is the original that started all of it. This was the heyday of the Rat Pack and this shows them in their full glory in Ocean's Eleven. Here's a movie about early flight called Those Magnificent Men and Their Flying Machines. Don't know much about this one, 
but it looks like it depicts the days of early flight, the early 1900s. Here's an oldie but a goodie. It's called A Chump at Oxford, plus another movie, Men of War. And you can see all the fun Laurel and Hardy had wearing their dunce caps. Another even older film called Room Service, featuring all the Marx Brothers and Lucille Ball. There's Lucille Ball right there. Here's a classic remake of the film The Blob with another excellent cover. This is a remake and it's more graphically realistic than ever. Another sci-fi futuristic movie from the 80s called Stranded. Another spooky ethereal movie with a lot of good Hollywood makeup. This is one that I'll admit I have not seen but I would love to watch this. I love Steven Spielberg and I love Martin Short and Meg Ryan. Jeez, this has a lot of good actors in it. Dennis Quaid, Martin Short, and Meg Ryan, you can't go wrong. This looks like a fun, futuristic movie and is a comedy. Look how fun Martin Short that was. Here's an old classic that's been colorized. It's called When Worlds Collide. 81 minutes, it came out in 1951. Classic science fiction movie. If you love those cheesy B-movie graphics, this is probably a great one. The Rat Pack made another film called Robin and the Seven Hoods. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., and this time Bing Crosby. The Rat Pack's back for a rat-a-tat-tat of song and laughter. Another 50s sci-fi film, this one's in black and white, called Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. Relive the exciting days of sci-fi movie matinees with cult classic Earth vs. Flying Saucers. Here's a film called Around the World in 80 Days. Winner of five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. A story that's been told many times, but none have won as many awards as this particular film. Another classic, King Kong, the original. This one also features commentary in the special features. Here's a newer classic called The Silence of the Lambs, Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, and Scott Glenn. This particular laser disc folds out this way, and I actually don't mind that at all. Anthony Hopkins is so good at playing a creep, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? The Flying Deuces, Laurel and Hardy are at it again. It's a classic comedy caper. This film is actually sought after nowadays. It's a horror movie and it's a rare find. Ding dong, you're dead. Look at how disturbing the imagery is on the back. House is an unexpectedly ambitious, refreshing, and unpredictable horror comedy. Here's a very sexy movie with Nicole Kidman called To Die For. All she wanted was a little attention. The chemistry in this movie is insane with Nicole Kidman and Matt Dillon. Next up we have a film called The Hunt for Red October by Sean Connery. And also Alec Baldwin is in it, but he's not as big of a star as Sean Connery. This one folds out into a beautiful depiction of the movie. This film is based on the Tom Clancy's best-selling book, directed by the same director from Die Hard. Here's a fun 90s movie called Casper which features some very early CGI graphics. Another hit from Amblin Entertainment and Steven Spielberg. Here's a Clint Eastwood thriller called In the Line of Fire with John Malkovich and Rene Russo. They say Clint Eastwood gives a fine performance playing a secret agent who faces the ultimate enemy. Man, he must have been an old Secret Service agent. I thought there was a limit to that. Next up, we have Sandra Bullock in The Net, and it's a high-tech movie featuring computers and technology of the 90s. This film shows how dangerous it is to have your identity stolen or even deleted. Christopher Walken in the film The Prophecy, marked by fate, doomed by prophecy. Time is running out for mankind. This costs $40. Jesus, that's a lot of money. It's a chilling film with a top-notch cast. Here's another spooky film with an awesome cover called Altered States. Unlock the doorway to your mind if you dare. This is the first movie to feature an isolation chamber, which Joe Rogan talks about constantly on his podcast. Here's a film that features a young Tom Cruise called Legend. A world full of magic, wonder, and desire. This is before, of course, Tom Cruise became a Scientologist. In this visually stunning fantasy adventure, Tom Cruise is, of course, a legend. Next up, we have the original Speed with Keanu Reeves prominently featured on the cover. This is another excellent 90s cover. It shows the action that's in this film excellently. Sandra Bullock could not get on the cover. I guess she wasn't as big of a star at the time. Hardly even featured on the back. Here's a fun movie called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Only, you'll notice, these aren't the Beatles, these are the damn Bee Gees. What are they doing on here? Well, they did a film based on the Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Here's a comedy film at the peak of Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase's career called Spies Like Us, where they play spies that actually aren't so good at all. Here we have the film Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. Poltergeist 1 was such a huge hit, they had to come out with the second one. I'm not quite sure if I have the first one. I'll have to look in here. Here's a fantastic action movie called Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Another excellent cover. This is a film that features cutting edge technology and special effects for the time. 
In no particular order, we have Superman 3. The first two were huge classic hits. The third one was not as well liked, but still a good movie. A very colorful movie, this movie looks excellent on Laserdisc and much better than VHS. When you talk about the history of Laserdisc itself, it's been around for a long time. In the late 70s it came out and it was called MCA Disco Vision. I have a series of Laserdiscs that are from this era. They're all called MCA Disco Vision. Here's one called Grey Lady Down. These Laserdiscs were packaged very differently. They fold out this way and each one. This movie in particular has five discs. So you have to switch out the discs to watch the rest of the movie. This movie came out in 1978, featuring Charlton Heston, Great Lady Down. Jacques Cousteau, this one's called A Sound of Dolphins. This is an interesting look at dolphins. Another Jacques Cousteau joint, this is called Octopus Octopus. It's the enigmatic cave dweller of the sea. More MCA Disco Vision, this is the unsinkable sea otter by Jacques Cousteau. Next up on the MCA Disco Vision, we have Family Plot. Now the covers leave a lot to be desired. It doesn't really tell you much about the film itself. This is an Alfred Hitchcock film featuring Bruce Dern and Karen Black. Another Alfred Hitchcock joint, this is Psycho. Featuring, of course, Alfred Hitchcock's famous logo. 70s massive hit, Saturday Night Fever, featuring a young John Travolta. John Travolta dances his socks off in this movie. World War II classic, Midway. MCA Disco Vision captures this film excellently with Charlton Heston and Henry Fonda. A Marx Brothers film called Animal Crackers. The last remake of Beau Gesti, featuring Marty Feldman and Michael York. This movie was pivotal in many different ways. It's called American Graffiti. And because of this film's success, it led to the popular TV series, Happy Days to be made, an early Lucasfilms movie. Here's a movie called Slaughterhouse Five. This featured different packaging from Disco Vision. It pulls out like a traditional laser disc film. And another MCA Disco Vision film, Kids is Kids. Walt Disney presents this cartoon. Next up, a more modern film. This one is called The Jewel of the Nile. Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner and Danny DeVito that came out in 1985. Keeping in tune with Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner, we have here Romancing the Stone and Danny DeVito before Kathleen Turner totally demolished her own career. You can't kill what you can't find in Inceptor, a stealth fighter movie. It features the classic plane Nighthawk, which was a plane that could fly under the radar and destroy whole towns. Here's a movie that we're all a little too familiar with nowadays. It's called Outbreak. And this little monkey here led to a virus being spread all over the world. A terrifying movie when we know what we know now about viruses and how real they are. One of the great scare stories of our time. I was hooked, said Roger Ebert. Here's another Stephen King movie called Cat's Eye. Cat's Eye features Drew Barrymore, James Woods, Alan King, Kenneth McMillan, Robert Hayes, and Candy Clark. Here's another very odd but cool classic film called The Lawnmower Man, another Stephen King book. This features a lot of 3D effects that you haven't seen in other films. Here's Kurt Russell, William Baldwin, Scott Glenn, Jennifer Jason Lee, Revan McDorney, Donald Sutherland, and Robert De Niro. An all-star cast in this movie, Backdraft. Backdraft features a lot of greats and this movie's great. One of the biggest classic films of the 90s, Independence Day, with this awesome cover on this laser disc. This movie also folds out and features, what is this? Looks like we got a bonus in here. Oh, this is a bonus insert by Sci-Fi Fox, featuring the movies that are coming out on laser disc. That's fun. Anyway, the inside features even more excellent artwork. This is definitely the way to go if you were to watch this movie in the 90s on Laserdisc. You can play it a million times and the quality will not degenerate. And best believe I watched this movie a million times. Ooh! Next up we have A Few Good Men. Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, and Demi Moore. This one also folds out and features a lot of vibrant artwork. This movie was loved by the critics and is an excellent film. Here's one I'll have to admit went under my radar. It's called Broken Arrow. It features John Travolta and Slater. I forgot his first name. He's from 90210, I think. John Travolta and Christian Slater in this action flick. Harrison Ford in another action movie. This is The Fugitive. I really like this movie. It keeps a high intensity throughout the whole film. Tommy Lee Jones plays the marshal that has to hunt down Harrison Ford. And let me tell you what, Harrison Ford is pretty damn elusive. Dunna, 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 dunna,
a Pink Panther classic. They bring back world famous Detective Chief Inspector Jacques Clouseau. Here's one that you guys might not know about. It's called Memoirs of an Invisible Man, Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah. It's funny and fantastic, and it says the special effects are astounding. Mm. Next up, we have Michael Douglas and a much younger Demi Moore in the movie Disclosure. His career, his marriage, and his future are all on the line for Digicom executive Tom Sanders. He rejected the advance of his new boss, Demi Moore. So Demi Moore plays his boss and she comes on to him. Okay. That's a far-fetched story, but all right. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. We have the revenge of the Pink Panther. <laughs> Another classic Pink Panther tale. This is before you'd be called racist for dressing like this, or like this, or like this. Another 80s classic called Cocoon, where the old people can get young again. This is about a group of senior citizens given a second chance at being young, with our good friend Steve Gutenberg. Death Becomes Her, Meryl Streep, Bruce Willis, and Goldie Hawn, in this fun 90s movie, 1992. From the same director as Back to the Future, Robert Zemeckis. Here we have the MASH movie in all of its glory. One of the longest and most successful running series, they had a movie made at the end of its run with Donald Sutherland, Elliot Gould, and Tom Skerritt. Don't know much about this one, but it looks very intriguing. It's called Fire in the Sky. It's about alien abduction in the 70s. Based on the true story. I love it when that happens. Has excellent artwork on the front and back. It says the last 10 minutes are so terrifying you'll be gripping the edge of your seat. Well, what if I'm standing up? John Candy, Maureen O'Hara, Ali Sheedy, Anthony Quinn, and James Belushi. Only the Lonely, a comedy for anyone who's ever had a mother. I've never seen a movie where John Candy's bad in it, so this one's probably good too. Next up, the movie called Always, featuring Holly Hunter, Michael Dreyfus, and John Goodman. It's a film about planes that put out fires and the adventures that they have. I've heard about taking the low road, but high road to China? This features Tom Selleck in his rugged charm. And if you like Tom Selleck, you'll like Burt Reynolds in Switching Channels with Kathleen Turner and Christopher Reeve. There was always rumors that Christopher Reeve was a homosexual man, and judging from this image, they might be correct. All's fair in love and war, and not to mention in the news. Demi Moore in this exciting movie called The Seventh Sign, with a very cryptic cover. It stars Demi Moore, a young woman who discovers that she and her unborn child play a terrifying part in the chain of events destined to end the world. Well, no pressure there, huh? Harrison Ford back at it again in another action film called Patriot Games. This one sure is a classic. This is another movie based on the Tom Clancy international best-selling book. Here's a cult classic for you. Ever heard of this one? It's called Xanadu. This features recently deceased actress Olivia Newton-John. Here's a movie that I personally haven't watched yet, but would love to watch it. It's a fun look at history, and it's a movie called Insignificance, with Richard Dreyfuss, Gary Busey, Teresa Russell, and Will Sampson. This is a real crazy what-if kind of historical film. And I, I, I will always watch The Bodyguard, ooh, on Laserdisc, yeah, yeah. Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston star in The Bodyguard, another classic 90s thrilling action movie. I feel like the 90s and 80s were the best era for action movies. Kevin Costner, of course, plays Whitney Houston's bodyguard in this film. Here we go to start off in a new series of movies, James Bond Films. This one's called GoldenEye 007. While this movie is very good, the video game did outshine it as far as popularity. I think this one holds its own in the pantheon of James Bond movies. This also has an excellent two cover inside. Chock full of spectacular stunts, well I'd say so. My dad's favorite James Bond was this guy, Timothy Dalton, and this is his film License to Kill. This is James Bond as you've never seen it before, in widescreen. Go ahead and open it up, you can see his PP7 right there. This features Bond's most deadly enemy. That's what they all say. Next up, a more controversial Bond, we have here Roger Moore in The Spy Who Loved Me. A lot of people did not prefer Roger Moore's style of playing James Bond, but some people liked it very much. This is the movie that featured Jaws. It's me, Sean Connery, and I'm back in this film called From Russia With Love. And this time, his only gun is a flare gun. We'll see how that's gonna go. Sean Connery as James Bond in this film, From Russia With Love, which a lot of people consider is one of the best James Bond films. Ooh, we got more Bond. This is Roger Moore in A View to Kill. 
I think this has an excellent cover and takes place in the beautiful city of San Francisco. Roger Moore plays a more lighthearted James Bond in the films that he's in. Next up, another Roger Moore Bond called Live and Let Die. Yeah. This movie starts with tarot cards and ends with boats exploding. Here's a controversial title for you. It's called Octopussy, which is kind of like an octopus, but with less tentacles? I don't, I don't know. Another Roger Moore flick. How many women does he bed in this film? Well, you gotta watch to find out. I'm assuming eight, based off the title. Here's Sean Connery in a movie called Never Say Never Again. Because if you never said never once, then you, sh you shouldn't say it again. So that's a double negative. And look at this beautiful bombshell on the back cover. You're only gonna get that kind of artwork from laser discs. Another one. For your eyes only. Another Roger Moore film. He's done so many. Here's one of the most outrageous premises for James Bond. It's in space. It's called Moonraker and features Jaws again. James Bond had to jump on that bandwagon of space being popular in films with this movie Moonraker. And for my last Bond film, I have the movie The Living Daylights with Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton played a more stoic James Bond in this film. I love Tom Cruise and I love this film called The Firm. This was a film by Sidney Pollack. This film generated a lot of acclaim from critics. There can never be too much Tom Cruise in his first Mission Impossible film. An excellent action thriller. Here's another movie based on the news called Broadcast News. Here's another story about the news channel called Broadcast News. It's the story of their lives. People Magazine said it's the best movie of the year. Well, I guess not a lot of movies came out that year, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. He's a real man. His name's Burt Reynolds, and he's in this movie called Stick. Oh, that's his nickname. He plays a character called Ernest Stick Stickley. He's an ex-con who's trying to stay clean on the sunny streets of Miami. Here's a movie about cavemen called Iceman. He's 40,000 years old. This is an unusual suspense-packed drama about a team of Arctic researchers who find a 40,000-year-old man frozen in ice and bring him back to life. What is this, Weekend at Bernie's? Come on. Here's one called Leviathan, the true meaning of fear. It's a scary underwater movie featuring Robocop's Peter Weller. Also, Luigi, produced by Luigi. Produced by Luigi. Life is like a box of chocolates. Tom Hanks is Forrest Gump in Forrest Gump. This features behind the scenes special in the deluxe edition. Here the fold out features some of the classic scenes from the movie. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. Tom Hanks gives an astonishing performance as Forrest in this acclaimed film from director Robert Zemeckis. This is a movie that parodied the movie Top Gun called Hot Shots, featuring Charlie Sheen before his meltdown. Kiefer Sutherland, Julia Roberts, and Kevin Bacon play young professionals playing with death in this movie called Flatliners. Some lines should not be crossed, meaning death. You shouldn't play with death. What do we have here? This is a very interesting film that I'd love to watch. It features Mick Jagger, the lead singer of Rolling Stone, in this movie called Free Jack. It looks like a futuristic space tech movie. You've heard of 40,000 year old man, but have you heard of Cave Girl? And I think the cover really draws you in. I want to meet this cave girl and see what kind of skills she knows. This is one of the most beautiful cave girl you'd ever imagine. Instead of cave people, what about cat people? Laser video desk and stereo. Another really great cover. The director of this film said, previously I've made films about daydreams. This is my first film about nightmares. Here's a John Carpenter film called Starman, featuring Jeff Bridges. Here we have a young Jeff Bridges with his shirt off, if you're interested. Here's a classic comedy film that my dad loves called Blazing Saddles by Mel Brooks. This is another pull no punches type comedy where Mel Brooks really delves into some of the classic Western stereotypes. Hey, that's not a movie. This is a movie. Crocodile Dundee by Paul Hogan. This is all about two cultures colliding, the outback Australian lifestyle and New York City. Hey, that's not a sequel. This is a sequel. Crocodile Dundee 2, Paul Hogan and Linda Koslowski. And he's back at it again, and look at that knife. That's a big knife. It's even funnier than the first one. Here's another excellent cover in this comic book-based movie called Dick Tracy. It's the best comic strip movie yet. Brash and irresistibly fun. Blue Thunder featuring Roy Schneider. This is an action war film with the same guy that was in Home Alone. You may have heard of the Godzilla from 1999, but this is Godzilla in 1985. The legend is reborn. Just when you thought it was safe to return to Tokyo, Godzilla comes and blows it up. Here's a fun comedy movie, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. The boys from Monty Python make a very funny movie. Here's a crazy title for you. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. 
another futuristic movie. They say it was instantly categorized as a cult classic. Here's a movie that broke off from Superman. It's called Supergirl, her first great adventure. I don't think this one did quite as good as the original Superman. Here she is. She doesn't look quite as bulky with the muscles as Superman, but she looks, but I guess she's just as strong. Here's another Chevy Chase comedy called Fletch Lives, a sequel to the Fletch series. Chevy Chase plays Fletch again in this goofy off the wall comedy. Star Trek The Final Frontier with Spock and Captain Kirk prominently on the cover. Next up we have Star Trek Generations. Captain Kirk and the new captain have to get along. Star Trek Classic The Undiscovered Country. Laserdisc was the best way to watch these movies back in the day. Star Trek 3 The Search for Spock. This is like Finding Dory but instead we're looking for Spock. I see some Klingons, watch out folks. Star Trek 4, The Voyage Home. Home being of course, San Francisco. This is when the whole Star Trek crew go back to present day America. Here's a modern Star Trek called Star Trek First Contact. Resistance is futile. The Borg of course, the most terrifying enemy on Star Trek. Here we have Oklahoma, the famous play made into a movie. Rogers and Hammerstein's classic play. Two thumbs up, says Siskel and Ebert, to look who's talking. But as we know now, they give almost two thumbs up to every movie ever made. One of my favorite laser discs in my collection, I love Mars Attacks. With its dark humor, it makes this film very enjoyable. Mars Attacks shows some of the worst aspects of humanity, and some of the best. It started as a dream, it became a fantastic adventure. Space Camp, back at it again. We got the 7% Solution, a Disco Vision classic. Alfred Hitchcock classic, The Birds. He's got a lot of classics on MCA Disco Vision. The Bride of Frankenstein, classic horror film in black and white on MCA Disco Vision. The original Frankenstein, the prequel to the sequel. Frankenstein does it again, Boris Koloff. 70s classic Jaws, and you can watch it on video disc. And if that wasn't enough, we got Jaws 2, so you're even more terrified of sharks and swimming in the ocean. Cop film called Choir Boys, MCA Disco Vision. Here's a film called Earthquake. This film takes place in Los Angeles. Burt Reynolds in Smokey and the Bandit. Another, the, another Jacques Cousteau film with a horrible cover. Looks like some dead fish. It's called The Tragedy of the Red Salmon. Walt Disney's Chippendale. Before Chippendale's The Dance Group, there was Chippendale the Comedy. Abbott and Costello, Buck Privates. Another Walt Disney movie called Donald Duck. Ever heard of him? Here's a Matthew Broderick movie called War Games. Young Matthew Broderick. Playing with computers almost gets the world destroyed. Here's a classic 80s film called Gremlin. Steven Spielberg, huge hit. They're cute, but don't you dare give them water because they'll turn into animals after midnight. No food either. Michael J. Fox in the movie Doc Hollywood. After the Back to the Future fame, he did this film. Two Big Thumbs Up by Siskel and Ebert. Here's a film with Kevin Bacon called Tremors. Another classic. If you're a Scrooge, you should watch this movie and maybe you'll think twice. Bill Murray in Scrooged. The classic Christmas tale is redone by Bill Murray. Here's an interesting one. This one is called Dream Machine, the visual computer. The early days of computer graphics is archived here on this disc. Robin Williams in one of my favorites called Jumanji. In the jungle you must wait until the dice reads five or eight. And it looks great on this laser disc with THX surround sound. Here's a movie that lost millions of dollars for its producers. Waterworld by Kevin Costner. And even though the movie was a big flop, they're still charging $45. Waterworld, it wasn't as bad as people thought in my opinion, had some really good scenes and terrific special effects. Here's another interesting archive called Space Archive Volume 3, Mars and Beyond. This is showing you what it may look like on different planets. I'm not one for romantic comedies, but this one is excellent. Sleepless in Seattle, one of Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan's best movies. This film is really a sweetheart tale and takes place in the beautiful city of Seattle. Shmi, shmi, where shmi? Shmi is me. Here's Captain Hook. Dustin Hoffman, Robin Williams, Julie Roberts, and Bob Hoskins with a beautiful inside cover. This film did justice to the classic story of Hook. If you don't like spiders, don't watch this one called Arachnophobia. Two thumbs up, Siskel and Ebert says. Thrills and comedy, entertaining, it's great. You only need two words for a review, don't you? In one of my favorite movies in this collection, we have Back to the Future, the original, Robert Zemeckis film with a young Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Leah Thompson, and Crispin Glover. This film truly changed the world. This is one of the best films in my collection and I love it to bits. 
And of course, we had to get the sequel to Back to the Future, which is almost better than the first one. They go into the future, the year 2015. Unfortunately, we have let down the past by making a future that's not as quite as good as this film. And for the third movie in the series, we have Back to the Future 3, which I've probably seen the least, but in no less is still a good movie. A classic film set in the Wild West. $35, not bad for this film, on Laserdisc, Men in Black. Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, what an odd pairing. Disney's classic animated film, Beauty and the Beast. This is the Cav Letterbox edition. This shows the full length version of the film that they showed at the 1991 Film Festival. One of Stanley Kubrick's finest productions, 2001 A Space Odyssey. A truly revolutionary movie. This had fantastic special effects and blew the minds of people that watched it. The sequel to 2001 Space Odyssey is 2010, the year we make contact. Unfortunately, we haven't made contact with aliens yet and we're still waiting. RoboCop 2, a sequel to the cop that won't quit. This film was a mainstay in the 80s and did very well for the producers. Another sequel, we're doing them all out of order now, folks. This is Highlander 2, The Quickening, with a beautiful cover, starring, of course, Sean Connery in a sci-fi thriller. And he looks like Steven Seagal here. Here's Bruce Willis in the film 12 Monkeys. He's bald in this movie, so it must be good. Bruce Willis, Brad Pitt. What else could you want from a movie in the 90s? Here we have another awesome cover of this laser disc in Nemesis by Oliver Grunner. Another futuristic sci-fi. And in no particular order, Lethal Weapon 3, Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, and Joe Pesci. Yeah, Joe Pesci, I'm in this movie too. Looks like there's sex, action, and comedy. What else could you want? Back to an MCA Disco Vision classic. This one's called Roller Coaster. The classic film MacArthur with George Ree Peck. This is about the World War II general. Three Days of the Condor. Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway. In this harrowing tale. Clint Eastwood in the Iger Sanction. Robert Redford in the Great Waldo Pepper. It's about a guy in a biplane shooting people down. Paul Newman in Slapshot. This is a comedy hockey film. It's a great one. Fellini's Casanova. And they'll be talking about this one for ages. Thoroughly Modern Millie. Mary Tyler Moore and Carol Channing. This is a female dominated cast and it's a fun movie. Here we have Paul Newman, Robert Redford, Robert Shaw in The Sting. Here's Walter Matthau, Glenda Jackson, and Art Carney in House Calls. And this is a Rocky Love Affair movie in this contemporary romantic comedy. Back to the superheroes, we have Batman. This is the first Batman. Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton. Jack Nicholson plays a wonderful Joker in this film. Another Batman film, but this time with George Clooney. Beautiful front cover artwork. Alicia Silverstone, how did she make it into this movie? Well, nonetheless, it's a fun action movie with very beautiful, dazzling, and ingenious, breathtaking colors. Here's a darker movie called Batman Returns. We have Catwoman, the Penguin, and Michael Keaton. Yeah, Danny DeVito played a very memorable penguin in this film. Here's one, Batman Forever, with another ensemble cast. Jim Carrey, Tommy Lee Jones, Val Kilmer, Nicole Kidman, and Chris O'Donnell. They should bring Robin back. I miss the guy. He really helps out Batman in a lot of tough situations. Here's one that sits firmly in my heart. This is called Who Framed Roger Rabbit? A very inventive movie for the time, combining cartoon characters with real life action. A Steven Spielberg film. Another fun comedy that I like very much called The Burbs with Tom Hanks. His neighbors are very scary and he has to get down to the bottom of it. Comedy does ensue. Here we have National Lampoon's Vacation. This was the first vacation in the series. This is where they go to Wally World with the whole family and things don't go quite right. National Lampoon's European Vacation where they win a trip to Europe and they travel there as a whole family. One of the best in the series, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. He made this Christmas classic in the 80s and it stands up till this day. Raiders of the Lost Ark. What a classic, need I say more? This film is excellent to have on Laserdisc if you're a true collector. The original, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, with beautiful cover artwork. The Temple of Doom is everything you want from an action movie. And here we have the last movie in the series, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. We open it up and we can see more scenes from the film. Sean Connery and Harrison Ford. No, Sean Connery plays his dad. That's how old he is. All right, getting down to the last couple, folks. Here we have Bruce Willis in Striking Distance, another action film. How many has he done? Wow, magnificent back cover. It's so hot, it's on fire. Here's Bruce Willis in one of his famous roles, Die Hard. Opens up to see a scene of Bruce Willis on the rooftop. Remember when he had to walk through the glass? Yep, it's in this movie. Sequel to Die Hard, we got Bruce Willis, Die Hard 2, Die Harder. How do you die harder? What does that mean? This is the special widescreen edition, so you can watch in widescreen. 
Here's Bruce Willis in Die Harder, Die Even Harder. Die, no, no, it's uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Samuel L. Jackson's in this one. Here's a movie called The Road Warrior, which is also a Mad Max style movie. It's like a prequel to Mad Max with Mel Gibson in it. Very young, Mel Gibson. Here we have an odd looking movie called Young Doctors in Love. Michael McKean, Sean Young, Hector Elizondo. Irreverent, vulgar, sometimes disgusting, and delightfully funny. I loved it. Well, it's back with Sean Connery, and this time he's paired up with Wesley Snipes in this movie called Rising Sun. There's a lot of S's in that film. And it's another action film with Sean Connery. His old butt is still kicking butt. Here we got Peggy Sue Got Married. This is another Kathleen Turner film. Here's an interesting film called Tennessee Buck. Headhunters, cannibals, killers, and if he survives, love. Starring David Keith, Kathy Shower, and Brant Van Hoffman. I'm back, baby, and this time I'm even older, and I'm sporting a ponytail of some sort. Sean Connery in Medicine Man, spectacularly thrilling. He's got that old man ponytail, and he's still swinging from vines. Man, he's a badass. Here's a female cast movie called Feds. Rebecca De Mornay and Mary Gross. They look like they might not be good feds or they don't know what they're doing. Here's a movie called The Peril of Gwendolyn in the land of the Yik Yak. This one looks like it's trying to be like Indiana Jones, but not quite reaching it. Here's another funny cop movie called Utilities, Robert Hayes and Brooke Adams. A consumer crusader and a lady cop. When they meet, the sparks fly. Here we have a classic adventure movie from olden days called The Adventures of Baron Munchausen from the director Terry Gilliam. Here we have Second Sight with John Larroquette and Bronson Pinchot. He's in the detective biz with a psychic whiz. This looks very strange and it looks like it could be funny with the guy from Jurassic Park in it. Before the new Project X, there was this Project X movie with Matthew Broderick in it. It's about a highly intelligent young chimpanzee. Kathleen Turner, back when she was doing movies in W. Thumbs up, it doesn't say two thumbs up, it says one thumb up, ooh hoo hoo. It looks like Siskel thought differently about this film. Here we have Flight of the Intruder, Danny Glover, Liam Defoe, and Brad Johnson in this Top Gun wannabe movie. If you love parodies, this is one of the best ones, The Naked Gun, two and a half. Leslie Nielsen shines in this comedy with O.J. Simpson. This is National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1, making fun of Lethal Weapon, back when National Lampoon made a bunch of movies. Here's a movie called Metropolis, which features C-3PO's girlfriend on the cover. Now this is a spectacular instance of an expressionist design with moments of incredible beauty and power. Absurd ineptitudes and oddities that defy analysis. This is a very deep film and it's too deep for me. And to end my Laserdisc collection, let's end with a classic, Ghostbusters 1, Harold Ramis, Rick Moranis, and all the rest in this classic film from the 80s. One of the best films you could have on Laserdisc. If you're a true collector, you could frame this and put it on your wall. And you know, I have Ghostbusters 2. They're back at it again, and this time bigger and badder than ever. Rick Moranis, Bill Murray, and the whole gang back at it again. So there you have it, everybody. That's my whole Laserdisc collection. I hope you like this. Please leave a comment down below. Leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out my small channel. I love doing these obscure tech videos, and in the future I'll do more. I had a great time showing you all my laser discs, and I hope to find more in the future. Please leave a comment and tell me about the laser discs that you have in your collection. I'd love to hear about it. That's it for now. Goodbye, everybody.